Yeah, and that ball is crushed. Big yes. Mullins lays out. And another shutout for the Orioles. In the right field, watch it go. He got him. And that baby's gone. Are you kidding me? Nobody gave us a chance to start this year. Nobody. That's 100 wins right there. That's 100 wins in the first step. We just won the AL East. Stellar seasons are made up of memorable moments, and we'll spend the next hour looking back and reliving some of those incredible moments from the 2023 Orioles. Hello, everyone. I'm Brett Hollander, and we'll start by reliving the moment that this team and this town have been waiting for. Should do it. Marco going back. It does not matter. Adley Rutschman will score. And the Orioles, who clinched a postseason berth just a few minutes ago, seal their fate with a walk-off win. It is one of the great turnaround stories in forget baseball. Yeah. In American professional sports in a long time. This is step one of many celebrations. Here we go! I'm with Mike Elias, who I think was just in a giant beer shower. Can you hear right now? How is your hearing? My first beer shower in about 20 years, so good to see I'm still able to pull it off. This franchise is going to be in the thick of things for the foreseeable future. This is just the beginning. I can't wait to see what this team does the rest of the season. I hope we win the division. This is only the beginning. This was not the goal just to get in the playoffs. Now where we are right now, the goal is to win the American League East. Let's go, baby! This belongs just as much to all of you who have watched, who have listened, who have come to the ballpark all these years. You tuned in night after night, hoping for a moment like this. The 1-1 one -one to Story is grounded at third. Ramona Rios from third. The Orioles have done it! Go crazy, Baltimore! You are the new champions of the American League East. This is so good, isn't it? So happy for Brandon Hyde, Mike Elias. This Oriole fan base, these players, the guys that have been here a long time, you know, Santander, Mullins, Hayes, been through the hard times, and now they get to enjoy the good times. We got the power. I'm just so proud of these guys, so happy to watch them celebrate. They deserve everything. It's 100 wins in the toughest division in sports. So this is the real celebration we've been waiting for. You know, to start where we started uh, at the end of 2018 and, and then to have it culminate uh, in a night like tonight, probably one of the top nights in the history of the Orioles franchise. You know, Governor Moore and John Angelos coming up on the board, 30 more, 30 plus more years here, uh, 100 wins and the division crown on the same night. It was very magical. There's a little thing that folks have talked about for decades here called Orioles magic. Some folks will say the magic is back in Baltimore tonight. The more optimistic minded of us, they say the magic never really left. Just needed the right people to start waving the wands. Those are the right people. Those are the champions of the American League East. The rebuilding process began five years ago, but after this magical 2023 season, it went from a rebuild to build. Let's check in with Kevin Brown, Ben McDonald, and the Hall of Famer Jim Palmer, who had a bird's eye view of everything. All right, Brett, thank you. It has been one of the more special seasons we've seen around here in a long time. Ben, we have seen from 2019 when Mike Elias and Brandon Hyde started this process, just how far the Orioles have come. As you reflect on the last five years, what are some of the things that stand out to you? I think the consistency in the minor leagues, you know, building it 
from ground zero, basically all the way up. Michael Elias coming, saying what he was going to do, and then went ahead and did it. You know, and it, it, if you go back a couple of years ago, Orioles won 52 games. They won 83 games last year. So I think there was a lot of momentum coming into this year. I think that meant a lot. And almost a validation year for some of these players in a lot of ways to say last year was not a fluke. We're going to be even better this year. I think there's a lot of reasons for the turnaround, why things happened the way it happened this year. I think if you look at the draft picks, the draft picks, Michael Elias hit. I mean, Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson are soon to be household names across the country in the baseball world. Uh, when you hit on your draft picks, it speeds up the process, you know, in, in a lot of different ways. And I also think this young group played meaningful games last year all the way to the end of the season, very close games, and I think that's bled over to a lot of success this year. They learned how to win. This is a young group. Uh, this is going to be the first postseason for a lot of these Orioles. You were in a lot of postseasons, Jim. Six World Series, you know – what those pressure-filled situations are like. What will it be like for this team? Well, I hope that they'll just play the way they have. I mean, you know, they don't beat themselves. They, um, you know, they hit well with runners in scoring position. That can be a problem because usually good pitching stops good hitting, so maybe they won't hit 286, which is what the batting average was and the, the best in baseball. Um, but, uh, and the other thing is, and we've touched on it all year long, you know, the innings, you hope they haven't caught up yet. It doesn't look like they have in the month of September. You know, the last three months, the uh, e ERA was right around three and a half runs a game. So you're going to win a lot of games. Mm -hmm. In the postseason, you've got to be able to relax. Um, and, you know, the other thing they didn't do, and, you, you know, you're going to play three out of five, you're going to play four out of seven. If you get to the World Series, you'll play four out of seven. Do not have any long losing streaks or your year's <laughs> over. Memorable moments, there are probably too many to count, but we'll try to nail down a couple. Ben, for you, what come to mind? For me, it was, okay, they went 18 months, 18 games in April, and then May rolls around, you win 16. You say, okay, a lot of teams can have two pretty good months, right? But then they backed up a little bit in June, went 13-11, almost a 500 team. And remember what was coming in the month of July, right? They were going to play eight series against – eight teams that were all above 500. And I said to myself, this is going to be the make or break month. We're going to find out if the Baltimore Orioles are for real or not with this schedule coming. All they did in the month of July was win 17 games. And that's when they went into Tampa, the toughest place to win on the road, and they won three or four against the Rays in late J July, took over first place in the AL East and never looked back. Jim, what about for you? Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, I played on a team that won 26 out of 31. We only won 91 games. This, you know, this team is, you know, going to win more than that. And um, but what I, it, I go back. I mean, you go back to the, really the first game of the year. Uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan McKenna drops, or actually the second game, he drops a routine fly ball, and then uh, Duvall, who had 18. Uh, what total bases in the three game series hits a 100 mile per hour fastball and they only win one of the three games and then if you go back to June you're in the 10th inning against the Mariners the same guy that dropped the ball hits a walk off home run Cole Urban you know starts you know the Orioles lose four in a row they only had two four game losing streaks he pitches two great games at the beginning of July very much what they did last year when they won 10 in a row and then you know Tyler Wells you know one of the best pitchers in the American League early on uh, Radish, who he's had one of those outstanding years, he gets hit by a line drive down in Texas. What does he, Tyler, do? After Danny Colum comes in for a, what, a, a, an inning and a third or whatever, pitches five no-hit innings. So that's what this year is about. It's just everybody, as when you know, in '74, or all the great teams I played on, you know, the Lenny Staccatos of the world would never catch, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, they hit a, a walk-off home run in the tenth inning. It's been that type of year. Orioles magic has been reignited this season. An extraordinary regular season is in the books. Hopefully, an extraordinary postseason to come for these Orioles. Remember when the Orioles weren't predicted to make the playoffs before the season? Fangraphs gave them just over a 10% chance of making the postseason. But Baltimore went on to win the division and the most games in the American League, all while never being swept. In July, Baltimore honored the 1983 Orioles, a team that holds the one thing this year's squad covets. The group reunited at Camden Yards to celebrate the 40th anniversary of their World Series title, and they spoke about this year's birds. They've gotten a taste what winning feels like compared to, you know, three or four years ago. And I think that's a major, major factor that's pushing them now. And of course, you know, you can't win a, can't win a race without some thoroughbreds. And they have those kids that have gotten to the point where they've, you know, believed in themselves, they're starting to produce and they're winning and the sky's the limit. I like what I see out of Adley Rushman. 
because he has an effect on the pitching staff that you don't see anywhere else in baseball. He, and he, he walks out to the mound. When the guy comes off the mound being successful, he reinforces that. You know, he has a way of communicating with them. And I think all the players, from what I hear, really like him. They have a good ball club right now. I think the organization, they have a, a really good minor league system. And I think this organization, this is just my opinion, in the next couple of years, I think they're probably in the, I, I, I guess, in a situation where they could possibly win a World Series. Over the next hour, we'll take a look back at the moments, celebrations, style, fans, and players that made 2023 such a memorable season. But first, a fan favorite celebration takes hold of Camden Yards. And that's to the right side. That is through into right field. And Mullins with a base scoring hit. Uh, we've got a turn the water faucet on celebration when you hit. Another 3 2 is drilled. Hayes rips another one. And he'll try to leg it out for two. Austin Hayes sliding in with a double. There's the sprinkler. You got a sprinkler when you hit an extra base hit. And Mountcastle drills it. Deep left center field, out toward the wall, and over the wall. Come on now, Mountie. And what do we have here? <laughs> I remember, uh, I remember those days, yes, but it wasn't do. but it wasn't water. And they say Homer hose when you hit a homer. So just so you guys uh, we know that we that we get that straight. Ladies and gentlemen, may we introduce you now to the newest Orioles employee, Mr. Splash. He did it again! Oh Hearn! get on the board and Oriole fans get get doused. A splash statement. Watch out Mr. Splash, they're coming after you. It's great to watch your team celebrate. It's even better to be a part of it. And in section 86 this summer at Camden Yards, fans got to do both from sprinklers to homer hoses. If you came out to section 86 at Camden Yards, it was a party unlike any other. In May, the Orioles unveiled the Bird Bath Splash Zone, where on the field heroics were met with a spray of water from Mr. Splash. On the Splash Zone's inaugural night, Cedric Mullins made sure the water was flowing and Orioles fans were soaking it in. Ladies and gentlemen, may we introduce you now to Mr. Splash. Cedric Mullins sizzles one into right field off of a fastball. Uh, Cedric Mullins, 103 off the bat. Mullins, right center field. That ball's up the alley. That ball is going to be extra bases. Cedric loses the helmet. He's going to go to third, and he's in there. Let's get wet! Here we go! The bird bath is alive! Mullins, right field, base hit, extra base hit coming. He'll hold at second with a double, and Cedric will start the sprinkler in the dugout and in the bird bath. Three for four night, a triple, a single, and now a double. Now, if he hits a home run here, we may need to take no water all of the water in Camden Yards. Everybody's getting wet. Oh, in the right field. Mullins, did he do it? Yes. Yes. Yes, he did. It's a tsunami. Cedric Mullins completes the cycle and sends Camden Yards into water work. Cedric Mullins. Wow. Single, triple, double. 
And then a long ball here in the eight to complete the cycle. One of the loudest roars we've heard in this ballpark in a long time. Grin and Barrett. Grin ah. and Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, hey, just an awesome moment, and you know, glad we got the win. It's the seventh cycle in Orioles history. You just picked up the history of this franchise. When did the possibility of a cycle cross your mind? Uh, I mean, it, it always is anticipated after you get everything else, but the last thing you need. And for me, it was the home run, and you know, we're just trying to stick to my approach. I know we we're up by one, trying to put some more runs on the board and was able to come through. Cedric Mullins, the seventh cycle in Orioles history. You couldn't have written a script like this. Back by Unpopular Demand, this is You Talk with Tony, and tonight we're taking a bird bath. A lot of people have been asking me, why is Mr. Splash so popular? And the answer is pretty simple. He's got hoses and different area codes as Mr. Splash. There he is. Keep it up all night, Saturday. All right, here with my boy, Mr. Splash. Mr. Splash, a lot of people have questions about you. You're like a man in mystery about town. That's what they've told me. When people are uh, trickling in here in the sunset low in Charm City, are you identifying people that you really want to blast in the kisser, or is it more of an eeny, meeny, miny, mo situation? Well, I'm hoping we get enough hits that everybody gets soaked. Yeah. But, you know, there are a few people every now and then. They're making a little more noise, and, you know, they're the ones that really want to get sprayed. And you got to give the people what they want. <laughs> Now this is a serious one. Do you consider the wave a rival? A rival? Let's think about this. Do you want to get sprayed, cheer on the Orioles, have a lot of fun, or do you want to do exercise? That's a good point. Let's go, go, let's go. What's your stance on water conservation? <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> Tastes like the middle branch of a tab <laughs> Splashy, I'm feeling this right now, bro. I feel like he's going yard. Ooh, Henderson in the left center. Kiermaier at the wall. Get out of here! Woo! Up next, a closer look at the cause for all those celebrations. Indeed. This is where that monster Gunnar Henderson home run landed here on Utah Street. Soon there'll be a plaque to commemorate it for all time. But that's one of many great offensive moments this season. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights. Swinging away, hits his fourth hit of the game. Henderson trails it the other way. It's a party in Birdland. High fly ball left oh field. My. Did he? Yes, he did. As grand as it gets. Nine RBI nights. And that ball is belted. Adley Rutschman sends us home. 
Tampa. And this ball is long gone. No slow start for Jorge Mateo. And the Orioles win it on a walk off. And that's a three run homer. But he certainly didn't miss this one. Swings at the first pitch. He'll get one home. He'll get them all home. 2-2. Two, two. He drills one. Deep in the air to right field. Ryan O'Hearn has tied the score. Oh, yes. That ball was blistered off the bat. It is a three-hit day for Austin Hayes. Drilled right center field by Mullins. And that is a five-hit day for Cedric. Castle muscles one here. Henderson smacks it fair. This has been a crazy long inning, and it just got longer. Ooh. Henderson in the left center. And get out of here! Yes, he did! Grand slam! McKenna smacks it in the right field. That ball is deep. That ball is gone. This game is over. Westberg, flare, left side. It gets down, and Jordan Westberg has his first major league hit. And Kowser has it in the right field, his first major league hit. His first Major League RBI. The Orioles rock the Yankees 14 to 1. The Orioles have season highs in hits and in runs. The Orioles take the lead back. Well, how about you, Ryan O'Hearn? Zantan down to right. Zantan down to right. And this baby's gone. It's a home run. Are you kidding me? An electric display from Jorge Mateo. That's a fair ball inside the line. And you know what? Gunnar Henderson is not going to stop at first. Who needs a cycle when you can pick up your fourth extra base hit of the game? Santander Jackson in the right field. And who else but Anthony Santander? Orioles doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And Hayes got a hanger, and this time he didn't miss it as the Orioles go back to back. Eston Kerstad cranks one deep right for his first major league hit. How about that for your first major league hit? Mateo's going, and the pitch is fair. Fair ball inside the bag. Here we go. Here he comes. Mateo around third. He is going to score. This game is tied. Adam Fraser comes through. Mullins drives it high and deep right field. Cedric Mullins has done it again. A ninth inning three run demolition from Cedric Mullins. And the Orioles have the lead again. Holy smokes. It's holy smoked. The best teams don't rely on the offensive performances of just one superstar, but instead receive contributions from a variety of players throughout the season. Take a look at the Orioles 2023 offense, which was led by a different player at the plate each month. There were memorable moments at the plate, but also quite a few on the mound. On September 12th, starter John Means returned for his first start in 17 months following his Tommy John surgery and recovery. The former Orioles All-Star threw 75 pitches in five innings of work, and his late season addition to the rotation was a celebrated moment in the clubhouse. It's been a long time, a lot's happened since 
Um, you know, he walked off the mound here in April of 2022. A lot's happened for us. A lot's happened for him. I think it's been tough for him to uh, see the team turn the corner and be on the sidelines. You know, after that, you know, getting out there in the first inning, um, I, I had a lot more nerves, I think, before the game than I usually do. Kind of felt like the debut again. But uh, once I got out there and started pitching again, it, it felt natural. The Orioles' starting rotation surpassed expectations this season, and the entire Orioles pitching staff set a franchise record in early September for the most strikeouts in a single season. Coming up, a new look in Baltimore. The Orioles on the field play got a style upgrade with the debut of the 2023 City Connect jerseys. With the help of Baltimore's own poet, Gwendoani Fidel, the Orioles designed their Friday night home jerseys to depict the uniqueness of the city and its people. Colorful, vibrant, and quirky. The poem, You Can't Clip These Wings, served as an inspiration for the jersey design and came to life in this introductory video. When the wells have almost run dry, in the hard times dark in the sky, there's a mantra we live by. You can't clip these wings. It's exciting, knowing that Baltimore holds the center of the national stage with spectators not knowing whether to laugh or weep. This is where the yin and yang meet, where the yin and yang feast, what more can I say? This little city near the bay controls your oceans of emotions, invading your brain cells, and we just minding our business. We just ride it. We just bip it. We just drag it. Rarely acknowledging y'all existence. Look in the mirror. Y'all be tripping. You see, this is what it means to wear bottom on your chest. This is what it means to love bottom in the flesh. Do you know what it means to utilize your muscles to hustle for bottom You know we bring out the best. Mathematics could scan the true length of our wingspan. I'ma say that till my mouth is dry, you can't clip these wings. The cracks in our imperfections is where the light seeps through. The colors that comprises us reminds us it's Baltimore versus the world. It's gonna take a lot more than chatter to divide us. From Sandtown, North and Pete, Park Heights RNG to Patterson Park Fed Hill where we can't forget down the hill no matter if it's north, east, south, or west. From corner to corner, it's difference that exists. Yes, it's troubled waters depending on where you fish. We be brazen in the sun, Baltimore. We leave nothing on a plate, eating through the bone marrow, the gristle. Do you know what it means to wear Baltimore on your chest? To love Baltimore in the flesh? Do you know what it means to roll up your sleeve to hang your hat on the head of the city? Even though sometimes Baltimore is a wire jaw, we still smile with our chins held high. You can't clip these wings forever. We are here. We are joined here this evening by the star of the video, 14-year-old Akim, a student of Thomas Johnson Elementary Middle School here in Baltimore. It's the people of Baltimore that make our city so special. And Akim is here tonight representing all of Baltimore and brings with him the message that you can't clip these wings. Please give an Oriole Park welcome to Akim as he makes his way to the mound to throw out our first, very first City Connect ceremonial first pitch. Right here with Kanduani Fidel. First of all, big fan of your work, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, down at the uh, City Connect jerseys are here. Your thoughts on them? Um, you know, I'm just grateful and, you know, to be alive during a time, you know, where Baltimore institutions can, you know, speak about Baltimore in an honest, you know, way. Like speaking about the communities that we come from. Um, without any, you know, outside narratives, phony narratives. Um, so I'm just, you know, just blessed that, you know, people from the city can come together, you know, under, you know, in one space, you know, one place and share the same love that we all, that we all have. You can't clip these wings was the perfect phrase for the 2023 Orioles because of all their great high-flying defensive heroics. Let's take a look back at some of the best plays of the season. There is Hayes, spectacular play in left field. 
he wasn't an all-star. He might be one now. This ball is caught by Santander. Boy, Tony's been playing some D now. That's golfed to the right center. Mullins charging. Yes. Mullins lays out. Racing back at left field. And a leaping catch. Austin Hayes. Are you kidding me? Oh, what a play. McKenna. a true superhero effort. And on the ground, nice snag by Ramona Rios. Flash that gold glove. Diving stop by Westbrook, throw to first base. Got him. Wow. Diving Make play by play. Adam Frazier. A diving stop, Adam Frazier. What a play by Frazier there. Bare hand, Henderson. That's a terrific play. To the shortstop hole, Mateo to first, no way, no way, oh yes way! Jorge Mateo with a shortstop hole, Dazzler. Really, really impressive play right there. Henderson! Out of your mind! Henderson from foul ground, oh yes! You're going, how did this kid make this play? Oh, now, are you kidding me? Long way to go for Westberg, and he makes the catch. Adley Rutzman gets him at the plate. That's a bouncing ball past Mount Castle. Westberg on the oh, run. Bujinami yes. had his foot on the bag. That's a spectacular play. Wow. Oh, oh my. Snag for Gunnar Henderson on the run, heading back and right at the wall. Ryan O'Hearn. Line drive caught. There's one. Throw to first. There's your double play. Hayes racing after it. Dives. Oh, oh what a play by Austin Hayes. Hayes racing back there. Yes. Hayes. Super Hayes. A little bouncing ball. Cano with a knee backhand pick and he throws him out. To center field, hit well, hit deep. Mullins! He got it! He, he got it! He cannot be serious! Oh my gosh! He cannot have just done that! Oh. He cannot have just done that! Baseball took notice of the Orioles' young standouts for their play on the field, and fans enjoyed their style off of it. Futuristic Teletubbies, Ryan Mountcastle, Colton Cowser, Adley Rutschman and Gunnar Henderson arrived at Camden Yards with a unique look this year. And their arrival to the Orioles franchise is a big reason why the Orioles are at the top of the American League. Here's a look at the Orioles who were on MLB's preseason top 100 prospect list. Four of the five contributed at the major league level. And Henderson is the favorite to win the American League Rookie of the Year award. During the final week of the season, he was named the most valuable Oriole. The history of those, being able to be uh, up there with uh, all those guys like Ripken, Robinson, and uh, just the list goes on. It's uh, really special, and uh, to do it in the first year is really uh, awesome as well. The Orioles added to their talent pool by selecting Vanderbilt outfielder Enrique Bradfield Jr. with the 17th pick in the 2023 MLB Draft. In July, he visited Camden Yards for a major league introduction to Birdland. First of all, I'm super excited and proud to be here. I'm truly looking forward to being able to get to work and help this organization grow. It's been special. I don't think uh, you always have a vision and a dream of what draft night and after the draft will look like, but you quite honestly never know. So just being able to really take every moment and cherish it and be with my family and, and the people I love has been truly special. Congrats. Thank you. Nice Good to meet day. you. Yeah, yeah, you too. Congrats, man. Nice I appreciate it. Enjoy your time. Thank you. Where am I headed? Ready to swing it? Yeah. You can go whenever. You got a good guy throwing BPD. Your praise is one of the best I've ever seen. So it's going to be down the middle. Let's not hype him up too much. Hey, and you got He's like, actually really good. the best yeah. BP partner. Colton Hauser, the most chatty guy in the York. <laughs> Ah!
Let's see where that gets. No. Not yet. Next round. Yeah. There we go. Good answer. I'm warming up. There was another memorable visit to Camden Yards this season. Luke Brockway from the Make-A-Wish Foundation got to manage alongside Brandon Hyde and meet some of his favorite Orioles. Thank you. We're the manager for the day. So we already announced the lineup, but you might talk to him about a few adjustments to the uh, lineup. I might have to. All right. I haven't seen it yet, so. Of course. For today or for always? Always. Hi, Lou. How are you doing? Brandon Hyde, nice to nice meet, to you. meet you. Yeah. You're going to take my place today, I hear? I'm going to go golf, I'm... I think. <laughs> this is the lineup today. Everybody I mean, always does. First three, that's the go to right there. I think, I think this is solid. Is this a winner? I think so. Oh, my goodness. Felix Batista. Get okay. Patient now. Oh, get okay. okay. Un poco. Okay. <laughs> This is crazy. I'm sorry, I'm not like talking it's that crazy much. For me too. Yeah, no. Talk for that. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, you ready for your media session, man? Ah. I'd like to introduce Luke. He is our manager of the day. Luke sort of needs to have this experience and do this golf course either golf or something. This is fantastic. Um, I mean, I'm sure you can tell. It's hard to speak because how excited I am. I hope that we just play well. And I think I still haven't, you know, met the entire team yet, so I'm looking forward to meeting, especially, you know, Abby Rochman. How's it going? This is crazy. I'm not going to lie, man. <laughs> this is unreal. I remember your debut. Yeah. You know, just did the whole spin. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. I just, just taking everything in. That was it. Huh? That was it. Day could be over right now and I'd be happiest man. <laughs> it's like crazy, man. How we doing? Let's go, baby. Let's go. Uh, you're the manager, bro. Two times. Two times. <laughs> you got to go twice. Come on, come on. Come on, consistently. All right, ready? Two times. There we go. Come on, just one. Two times. 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 Coming up, a behind-the-scenes look at this year's Orioles All-Stars. The Orioles finished the first half of the season with the second-best record in the league and four first-time All-Stars. Let's take a look and see how Brandon Hyde delivered the news to the Orioles. Okay, we've had a great first half. We we're going to have a great second half. And we're going to play in the welcome. And I'm really proud of everybody in this room for what we've done so far this year. We're not even close to being done. We're going to continue to be, get better as the year goes, goes on. And we're going to continue to have awesome individual performances. But it's so cool for me to recognize some guys that are going to be representing us in Seattle. And here they are. Ali Rutschman. Batista. <laughs> Cano. Hazy. 
You guys, it's so well deserved. Enjoy your time in Seattle. Come back and ready to win the second half. Great job, you guys. Awesome, awesome. Let's take a behind the scenes look at the all-star festivities for these young birds, including Adley Rutschman in the Home Run Derby. You know, I grew up coming here. This is the this was the first and, and only ballpark I had been to growing up. Just being here means the world. Um, and I got all the friends and family here, and so it just feels so familiar, but just weird that it's in this uh, environment. Next up for the Baltimore Orioles and a Pacific Northwest native from Portland, Oregon, Adley Rutschman. This is his home ballpark growing up. In Oregon, you come here to Seattle to watch. All right, so Rutschman and Dad. Yeah, that is a catcher's mitt. He can hold some baseball. Oh, baby. Jump City off. Pitch one. Adley leads the yard. He's two for two to start this thing. Boy, he's throwing him right inside. And that's wheelhouse stuff for Rutschman. Boy, what a start, Adley Rutschman, 21. What a picture that is with Dad. How about this? No way. Adley Rutschman will go from the no right way. side. <laughs> Start showing off. And his off. first one goes. Start showing off. Que clase Lucille. Woohoo! Adley Rutschman knew something, boys. He should get double points for this. Is he six for six? Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> that one did Adley not go. Adley Rutschman. Did he go seven of eight in that final round? Yes, he did. 30 seconds, seven of eight from the right side. There was another memorable moment this year as five-time All-Star Adam Jones officially retired as an Oriole on September 15th. The center fielder spent 11 of his 14 Major League seasons with the Orioles, and his arrival in 2008 was the signature deal that began Birdland's revival. I'm just glad that it all worked out. Um, the, my final time putting on a jersey it will be here. And uh, it's just, I'm just forever grateful for what Baltimore has taught me. Uh, and, you know, I'll be forever grateful. And I'm just glad that uh, I'll always be welcomed in the city. Uh, people here really appreciated the way I, I carried myself, played the game, and uh, gave back. Next up, we're closing out the show with the pitchers who closed out the games. And now, Ben McDonald, what time is it in the ninth inning? It is time to turn your clocks back to mountain time. He got him at 97. A 2 wow. till he burns him. 101 again. That's some high octane stuff. He goes to the splitter. And another batter falls victim to the mountain. Well, the, you know, the big question, what kept this guy in the money loose for all those years? Because he's that special. When the lights went out at Camden Yards this season, it meant Felix Bautista was taking the mound. And his ability to consistently overpower hitters and close out games made him the recipient of multiple American League Reliever of the Month awards. Bautista's August injury meant Orioles relievers had to take over the ninth inning role, and they did so in a big way. Well, we always talk about it. You need 27 outs and have a lead, and they're still looking for that elusive third 27th out. Welcome to Orioles baseball. 0-2. Oh, oh, he see. couldn't. <laughs> there you go. 99 yeah. for a 9-5 to win. What a uh, way to make a living. And tonight, 
it will be Tyler Wells to try to send the Orioles to the American League East title. 1-2 for Dugo with a ground ball off the glove of Wells. He picks, he shovels, and there is one out to go. I was hoping the Wells thing was going to work out there in the night. And fortunately, show what kind of guy he is, the character he is, and how tough he is. The 1-1 one -one to Story is grounded at third. Ramon Arias from third. The Orioles have done it. Go crazy, Baltimore. The opportunity to come in tonight and, uh, and close the game, I mean, it's a dream come true. As we close up the show, we'll leave you the same way the Orioles' battery mates do, with a big embrace and a lot of love. Thanks for joining us for this look back at a memorable 2023 season in Birdland.